Hermanos de Telegit, nos encontramos en un especial de lujo desde Sacramento, California, una banda que le ha ido increíble con tan solo un material discográfico. Estoy hablando de Imagine Dragons. First of all, thank you very much. An honor to talk with you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us. It's an honor to be here. Cool. And congratulations. A really, really successful album, uh, Night Visions. Tell us a little bit the adventure of the creating process of this album. It, you know, it was four years in the making. Uh, we've been a band for four years, but we took a while to put out that first album. We just released short EPs because uh, we wanted to make sure that we were ready uh, to put out something we were proud of. So it took us a bit longer than most bands, and, and uh, we put a lot, you know, we put everything into it. We really put four years of work into that album. And I think with the end result, we're very happy with how it turned out. It's very unique, very rhythmic album. It's kind of, you know, rhythm and... Uh, mixed with, with rock. It's kind of the electric world with the acoustic. So it's kind of brings a lot of different elements together. Cool. And, and, and I think that you're right. It's a unique album. Uh, when I listen to the album, I find uh, songs that are rock oriented, uh, another that are more folk oriented, another that are more pop oriented. How hard was to find that balance between sounds? Uh, we love all those sounds. Um, you know, we grew up listening to. I guess we all grew up listening to the 60s and 70s rock. That's something we all have in common. But from there, you know, Paul Simon, we love Paul Simon, we love Harry Nilsson, we love The Cure. Um, and as a band, grow, you know, growing up in Vegas, we would play those, we would play these, these songs from these artists that we love. And I don't know, maybe some of that just sort of seeped into us a little bit. Cool. And now, and now uh, another interesting thing is that the producer of this album, Alex the Kid, it's a really well-known producer, but most of it because of the hip-hop work that he, he has done, like Rihanna, Eminem, or uh, Jay-Z. How hard was to find the same way of working with him? Uh, you know, it was, it was, strangely, it was a perfect mix for us uh, because we already were a very rhythmically... Uh, eh, Oriented, that's the word I'm looking for, thank you. Rock band. Uh, so we were very obsessed with, with, with rhythms. And Alex just kind of came in and helped us achieve that extra edge uh, that he had through his producer experience of getting the snare to be a little harder, the drum to hit, you know, and to be big. We're obsessed with big sounding drums. And, and uh, he helped us capture that, that element, that sonic element. Um, so he was perfect for us. It was his first time really working with a rock band, and it was our first time working with with kind of uh, someone who came from an urban background, uh, sonically. So it was, it was perfect for us. Cool. Now, um, uh, talking, talking about, about what's next, of course this album it was huge around the world. Do you feel pressure for what it could be the second studio album? No, I don't, I don't think pressure is the right word. I think we're excited about it. I think feeling pressure or, or fear, that's kind of the opposite of, of creation to us. You know, we, we, we didn't create this first album out of fear. And we're not going to create the second one out of fear either. So no, we don't feel anything, anything like that. It's just we love to make music. It's what we do. Um, you know, even when we're, when we're on the road, you know, we, every waking moment we get, whether it's on the tour bus or in a hotel room, uh, before we go on stage, we're writing. So it's never a chore for us. And at the end, you know, when it's time to make a record, we'll just pick the best songs that we've we've written and and go from there. Cool. Now, Danny, uh, radioactive, uh, huge huge song around the world. It took you by surprise, the, the amount of success? Yeah, I don't think that we could have expected uh, what happened with the album and Radioactive to have happened. You know, we, we didn't go into the studio trying to create something to, you know, to sell or something to go out and, you know, we, di we didn't really expect it to be received the way that it was. We were just trying to create music that we loved and create an album that had you know, the kind of contour that those classic rock albums that we grew up listening to had, the kind of thing that you would put on and listen to from beginning to end and just kind of let yourself escape into this musical journey. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to see the way people have responded, and it's amazing to be able to have the opportunity to travel around the world and bring this music to places that we've never been before. You know, like Mexico, we're super excited to be getting down there. Cool. Exactly, precisely talking about your visit to Mexico, what, what all your fans can expect about, about the visit in October? Um, well, we're definitely going to be searching out some delicious foods. And we will be <laughs> talking about them on all of our social media. I'm sure you'll be flooded with stuff about food. Uh, but besides that, we're just really excited to bring the show to Mexico. You know, We have a lot of drums on stage, and we, we are looking forward to just banging on those drums for all the people of Mexico. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, and talking about the, the video, radioactive video, who came the idea of, of use Lou Diamond Philip? 
<laughs> Mr. La Bamba to <laughs> Yeah, man, the legend, the man in the legend. He actually uh, reached out to us. He was a fan of the band, and uh, and the second we heard from him, it was like the stars had aligned. We knew we needed Lou Diamond Phillips to be in the video, and he was the best part of the video, in my opinion, uh, far better than the band. Uh, you know, the smoke rings. His he was like singing. Uh, Neil Diamond songs and calling it Diamond Does Diamond <laughs> and he was just just such an amazing dude so down to earth I'm sure we're going to work with him again we love him cool now what could be the, the most important thing that you learn doing the EPs the Imagine Dragon EP the Hell and Silent EP that you use it for this new uh, first studio you know I think uh, it was definitely a growing process for us uh, we're, we're continually you know trying to stretch ourselves and, and uh, it also was a matter of finding our own sound uh, we wanted something that, that was unique to us and that felt genuine and natural. And sometimes it takes, you know, quite a while to really, you know, they say that there's that 10,000 hour rule that as a band you need, or anything in life, you have to spend 10,000 hours at something before you become proficient at it. We're at 9,000. So yeah, we're at 9,000. So <laughs> no, but, you know, so we just tried to put in a lot of time uh, to, to, to practice that. And... Um, I think those EPs, you know, sh if you listen to them, it shows kind of the growth of the band as you listen throughout it, it's, and, and, and hopefully it shows a maturity of sorts, and uh, we, we still are 